Okay, yeah, thanks very much uh, for the introduction. And yeah, I'm very happy. To, so CEO still sounds funny. <laughs> and I'm really happy to present our startup Qlibri today and the technology and the products we have. And I'm especially happy to uh, talk at a workshop that like this nano meets quantum because I mean, that actually could be our company name. And I literally had talks with that title already. So, and, and why this is fitting so well, I, I hope to explain to you in the next uh, 20 minutes. Um, so today I will talk a lot about uh, microscopy of nanoscale materials. So we have the first part of our workshop there. So it's a very nano idea to do and uh, probably a short review, but I mean, everybody would agree. So why is microscopy a really cool tool is so we have non-destructive measurements. So I'm like talking about optical microscopy. Um, and you can characterize basically a, a huge amount of materials. Yeah, if you combine it with micros with spectroscopy, you can do everything basically a lot of. And this works really well down to the micrometer scale. Now the question is, we're talking about nano. Since light matter interaction decreases when the when the particle size decreases, so what happens if we, if we are now in the nano scale regime? How how well does this work? And uh, there's a brief like introduction. So you have two possibilities to look at, at, at light in this way. You can either detect emitted light or uh, absorbed light. So basically photons missing. Photons missing is absorption. And so they are at the nanoscale level we are talking about, you have to detect one photon missing in a million photons. There's a, the cross absorption cross section you have there. So this is a million dots and you have to like detect this one dot missing. And yeah, this is really challenging and basically most of the times impossible due to short noise limits. So if you want to, detect with that sensitivity, you have to integrate for really long times. And there you run in, in, in other troubles. The other part is fluorescence. Uh, so detecting emitted light. So there you would have single photon and as most of the snow probably, this is actually, even if it sounds really complicated, it's rather easy. So, so we have detectors to do that. The problem is there that of this nanoscale matter, only a very small percentage actually shows fluorescence. And uh, of these particles, even like probably a small percentage of the energy levels that are interesting to you show fluorescence. So you get only very limited information. And this is kind of, well, in our opinion, we are a bit stuck uh, because actual methods have like many things that are not visible at all in the, on the nano scale. Uh, you have incomplete information, it's very time consuming. Of course, there are many really elaborate and, and nice techniques. So like uh, labeling and, and Raman scattering so that, that can also kind of bit circumvent that. But they all kind of at the end boil down to these limitations. And we want to, or I think, solve this problem by an absorption microscope that is a factor of thousand times more sensitive than any kind of commercial absorption microscope on the market. And in the meantime, we can do also spectral information of the sample in real time. Uh, so this is a really huge step forward. And the question is, okay, how, how do you get to this, to this level? And this is by using, instead of objectives and lenses, we use uh, optical resonators. And for that, as I'm told, uh, Thomas, our co-founder, um, won the Nano Innovation Award in 2019. And optical resonators is a technology from quantum optics. So here's the quantum part now. Um, I think, I don't know how much Richard talked about this, but I will briefly go through the concept of optical resonators from quantum optics. So basically a resonator or also called a cavity consists of two highly reflective mirrors where light bounces back many, many hundred thousand millions of times before being to leave again. And by that you can strongly increase light matter interaction and quantum optics is done to, to bring, to couple light and matter in a quantum mechanical way to create new states and do a lot of amazing physics. So, that, I mean, having like, we, we want to increase sensitivity, having bounced back photons a lot of times, somehow seems like the right direction. The issue with these uh, type of resonators is that they were for a very long time microscopic. So the mode volume of the standing wave there is on the order of millimeters or, or bigger. So basically you cannot do microscopy with that. So no, nobody will, will buy a microscope with a millimeter resolution. Um, and in addition, if you have an individual nanoparticle, uh, the, it, the percentage of the, of the standing wave it occupies is much too small to get high sensitivities. So what the core technology of our products is that we shrink one of these mirrors to microscopic size. So this uh, uh, top mirror is, is smaller than a human hair. 
and it's concave. And by that, we have a focus kind of focus. So the waste of this mode on the sample is near the diffraction limit. So we are somewhere we can really start talking about microscopy. The issue is that these uh, uh, mirrors are not commercially available. The cool thing is that they were invented at LMU and the group of, and the chair of Professor Hench. And now they are commercially available because we uh, already sell these mirrors to quantum optics groups all over the world. And uh, so if we, we, how we fabricate these mirrors, so we use uh, single mode optical fibers, break them. And then by a like, special laser setup, we shoot a hole in the end facet and get this depression. And we can do really nice symmetric structures with a few nanometers deep, a micrometer size. Uh, they are due to this uh, melting process, atomically smooth, which is really important if you want to go to a high number of round trips. And uh, we have multi-shot techniques. So earlier it was most of the times like a single shot. Now we can multi-shot and basically fabricate any profile geometry we want. Then we do a highly fractive dielectric coating. So it's 10,000 times more fractive than a standard mirror. And with that, we basically we can tune all parameters of our cavity. And this is how it looks like then. Uh, in, in, in real real life, uh, so we have here this is the fiber. There on the top is the basically the, the, it's like beveled, and then there's the mic micro. And this is the mirror image in the microscopic mirror. And now basically, okay, well, how how do you get light into such a structure? Because I mean, two basically two mirrors that reflect everything, uh, so no light will pass at all. This is right. But whenever the distance between the mirrors is a multiple of the wave, half the wavelength, you get 100% transmission, at least in theory. So uh, then the photon goes in, bounces back and forth millions of times, and then leaves the resonator again. And uh, if you tune the resonator lengths, you get these uh, transmission resonances to these peaks. So it's always also really ultra sharp spectral filters. And so now, we are almost there at the microscope, but a quick detour to a second product. If we now stay with this and really increase the number of round trips, then we are actually in quantum optics because we get the strong light matter interaction. And you can do, do really cool things with it because this is an open micro resonator. So basically two mirrors are not fixed to each other. And the advantage of that is, uh, oh, so, sorry, I forgot that. Apparently, like what you have, now, if you put a sample inside, in this case, also a carbon nanotube, um, this nanotube now, of course, per only absorbs a tiny, tiny amount of light, but it does it 100,000 of times. Because we, so we circumvent short noise limit basically by recycling these photons. And by that, uh, we get a, a really rather easily detected, detectable transmission signal um, after the resonator. Well, important that one uh, here uses like we detect actually extinction, so it's absorption and scattering, depending on which nanostructure you look at that has to be considered. Now, the detour to quantum optics platform, which is like our first product that will uh, get to the pilot customer this next month. Um, and the cool thing is basically, you tune, can tune the resonator length. So, by that, you can basically adapt to any quantum system you want to look at. Uh, you have an open access, so sample exchange is really easy. You can look at a million different emitters with one resonator. You can do scanning, so orientation on the sample. And because the mirror is microscopic, you have a small mold volume. It's really important because all the quantum effects scale inversely with the mold volume. So it's a really cool platform, but it's actually a, a quite challenging technology. And we actually, with this product, want to enable researchers that have really cool samples or at the brink of, of going to quantum optics to do that in a very efficient way. And for that, we developed a cryogenic platform that is easy to use to really yeah, have a low entrance barrier in that field. And it was very important and really at, in that field, also in academic, it's a, it's a kind of competition to get these mirrors really with a fixed distance that this has to be really stable because you have to stay exactly on the resonance of your quantum system. Um, and the problem is that most of these uh, uh, setups are, are used um, with closed cycle cryostats. So it's really nice because they don't need expensive helium infrastructure, but they have a compressor pumping helium and this is like kicking your cavity with a foot every, every second. So this is not really well. And even the most uh, stable cryostats, they have vibrations on the, on the sample stage of five nanometers, which is of course for microscopy, okay. Uh, it's fine, but for, for cavities, it's, it's super high. So we need a factor of 
the orders of magnitude of reduction. And that basically the work we put into to our, our, our prototype here, that everything has to be optimized to the limit. Uh, mechanics is a really important part. Everything has to be super stiff. I, I think uh, uh, yeah, FM people probably know that as well. So, and it, like the way cables are attached, everything has to be optimized. And with this, we are um, arrived at like on an optical tablet room temperature, there's the, the fluctuation of these mirrors that are a couple of micrometers apart is uh, 100 femtometers. So much smaller than an atom. That's how, how, how much you can stabilize this. And then at cryogenic temperatures where everything gets worse always. And with the cryostat on, we achieved 15 picometers um, length fluctuations. And this is then translated into optical, sub picometer optical stability. So we are actually there where we can really do really, really cool quantum optics experiments with this. So this is the end of all my detour. Let's go back now. Okay, nano meets quantum. Now we, we are at the matching point. Uh, because, and, uh, spoiler, this is, this is here what happens. Uh, that's our demonstrator for ultra-sensitive absorption microscope. And because you cannot only tune the length of the resonator, but from your course also laterally scan the resonator. And uh, this, then you get a raster scan image. And at every pixel, light interacted hundreds of thousand times per sample, giving you this huge sensitivity. And this is real time. So when Thomas started his PhD, this picture took a couple of hours. Now we are uh, at basically real time imaging. This is also next to this micro mirror technology. I would say the key feature, what, what helped us to push this from a really nice lab application to potentially really universal microscopy technique. And also patent pending regarding that procedure and what what's the the, the 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 potential of combining my nano and quantum use one sees now here so the key element is okay how fast how sensitive are you with respect to how fast are you I mean, that's always trade-off and most conventional absorption microscope are like in that area for more big players then there are really cool experiments on, on high level institutes um, that that use different effects uh, to, to get more sensitive, but most of the time at the cost of, of speed. And we are up here. This is also a slide that business people always really like a lot. Um, uh, so uh, just because, I mean, we use this different technology. So we are not, not bound by optimization because, I mean, we are now at this level where we are now, we can start optimization. So we get, there's potential to get a lot more sensitive. Um, and there have been like different, uh, like test measurements that show these, these performance. So we first imaged carbon nanotubes uh, in absorption. I would have been really happy if that was available during my PhD already. It would save me a lot of work. So we can square, square nanometer uh, absorption cross section. Uh, you can here's a two D materials. So you can also like um, uh, there's this imaging is really cool because you can map out ultra small differences in absorption. Uh, there's this really fast imaging I showed you already. You can do spectroscopy because basically you have a, one of the most sensitive spectral filters. You can tune it. So this basically spectroscopy comes with, with the technology. Uh, so it's single molecule. So it's in a carbon nanotube. People would argue whether that's a single molecule, but yeah, we say it's a single molecule. You can do polarization sensitive detection. And uh, now, so these are all works um, in the group of David Hunger. Uh, with the collaboration with Alex Hügele. And this is now uh, to uh, map and characterize uh, low defect concentrations in uh, two-dimensional material heterostructures with the group of Christoph Kastel from Watershotki Institute. So this is, uh, and, and we look always for, of course, bias, but also interested test beta testers. So if you have something, a cool sample, okay, you could profit from this absorption technology because it's label free. You don't basically you should see almost everything. Yeah, please feel free to contact us. Um, and if you want to know what uh, resonator microscopy can do in the life sciences, I recommend you visit the post of Rute and Florian uh, tomorrow. They have really amazing data regarding that as well. And so now what, what happens if you combine MCQST and sense? So it, it's either a very unpronounceable word. It's really good for Scrabble. Oh, you get, you get asked, Culebri, which is also a really good word for Scrabble. Um, with our microscope, basically, but we have the three products already. So we have these micro mirrors, quantum optics platform, and the microscope. And just a quick recap, how we profit also from this ecosystem in, in Munich. Uh, we originated from LMU, got the, the, the kickstart of everything was then probably the Sense Innovation Award. 
you got an um, ERC a proof of concept funding, the exist Forschungstransfer with also a lot of help from the LMU. And then finally uh, started the company this March, already have over 20 customers in, in uh, worldwide, managed to allocate uh, 3 million euros of public funding, which is also a really nice situation in, in Germany compared to any other country actually. And have now a team that's over 10 people with including students. And this is basically probably the most important part um, because, okay, it's, for me, it's really cool to work with this technology, to work the interface of science and, and academia and uh, industry. But the coolest thing is to be able in the startup to build your team, to build a working culture that you enjoy and have amazing people yeah, to, to, have, uh, to spend the day with. And I want to thank everybody here to, to make my, my, my work life nice <laughs> and to help to create all these amazing results and developments um, I just presented you. And of course, thanks also to funding agencies, to our business mentor, Khaled, and the scientific advisor board, Professor Hensch, David Hunger, and Alex Högele. And uh, so obviously we, are, we are not near the Hudson, but Munich is also really nice. I could now picture of the Alps. We also hire, we look for people, so like very skilled people, optics background. Um, please contact us uh, now after the talk uh, at, uh, in the evening via our homepage, via LinkedIn. We look very forward to people who want to work at this interface of nano and quantum academia and industry. And yeah, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer questions. That's it. Questions, please. Uh, okay, let's first take here. Uh, thank you very much for the interesting talk. I was just wondering, um, what is the typical cavity length that you have or distance of the, the fiber to the sample? So it depends a bit on the, on the application. So it roughly for microscopy, we are on several micrometers. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for quantum optic experiments, you want to go small. You want to basically touch the mirrors. Um, and, but if you would go now more to the life science part, probably you can, th thinking of cells, you can also basically them like 50, 100 micrometers even. It basically is limited by the, by the dimension of this micromirror, the, the maximum length. But usually okay. we are a couple of, micrometers 10 20 micrometers and i guess uh, this is then fixed by the curvature of the mirror? yes exactly so basically the cavity is stable in a certain regime which is determined by the curvature of the mirror yeah okay thanks what an absolutely fascinating talk thank you very much for that i have a quick question concerning um, so the obvious application from a bio perspective is mass measurement on single molecules can you comment on the prospects of making a so what, what on, on single molecules? Molecular mass. Yes. So using absorption to measure mass because it, it sort of you know, there's, there's established techniques, mass photometry and so on that just use sort of an optical focus. And yeah, that's actually why I had this talk to get into contact with people like this because we, as you see, have uh, yeah we have a strong background in quantum optics and nanotechnology, and uh, so I don't know. So with uh, probably an issue that always has uh, to man be mentioned. So far we do not measure in liquids. I don't but know. You don't need to measure. Yeah, then, then let's have a talk after that. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I have not, like, mass spectroscopy is really something we are not uh, into yet, but uh, let's discuss it. And I, I'm. You can see a single protein. Yeah? I, and I, I, I guess. And, and that could work out. Yeah. Our, our FCS based on absorption, absorption FCS. Yeah? So we, we say nothing is, nothing is invisible anymore. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Okay, but well, that's fantastic, Carsten. Yes, uh, thank you. Very, very cool um, technology. Um, I wonder about how you control the distance. I mean, do you have some? I mean, I'm sure you must have some feedback mechanism. How do you, how do you control this distance? And maybe a second part of this question is: if you now scan over a surface, um, do you keep the distance constant? And what about topographic? Effects. I mean, how does? I mean, you you usually have in this type of um, microscopy with a tip, you have two effects. I mean, the topography and the absorption um, of your sample. So, is there a way to to distinguish uh, what is what? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> so basically, um, the first part of the question. So yeah. Um, 
we keep the distance. So if you do, it's a bit different if you do the quantum part or the microscopy part. I guess you are more regarding the microscopy part. Um, for that, you, we actually don't stay fixed, but we modulate the tip of uh, like, I don't know, 50, 100 resonances and by that averaging. And so, so there we have, and, and, and you can always, you know, the laser wavelengths you, you put in and then you always know where you are and because this, this shifts. Um, you, you can always like with every line you rec can recalibrate. Okay. For, for drifts, for example, and that's something that you, it's an issue if uh, temperature drifts or something like that. Um, regarding, regarding topography. So, I mean, we are several um, like tens of micrometers away. And one has to say with this technology, it makes sense to look at things that are not visible in other microscopes. As soon as you see it in a conventional microscope, well, it's black for us. So, so far we did not have um, a lot of, uh, so, so really where we were getting really close to like where major part of the mode volume was filled with the material. You can actually do that. So you can do this imaging also while matching the dielectric, basically change in dielectric environment because this reduces the optical path lengths or increases it. And, um, thereby do imaging. Uh, the pure topography, uh, like with the distance we have is so far not, not something you, we, we, we have to take into account because basically we, we just look at the transmission. So how much is absorbed and be that the changes are not so, so significant regarding that. Okay. Thank you. Is that all part of the questions answered? Okay. No. Okay, everybody is hungry. But if more ideas coming up, so Jonathan is still here, uh, ready to discuss. <laughs> Maybe I can yes, ask a third question. Um, so, is there? I mean, if you if you were to image something like a cell or you know, more bulky thing, or like I'm I'm interested in nanoparticles, um, is isn't there a danger that you kind of destroy your your tip? like when you move over it no so brittle or something and because it's a glass fiber isn't i mean yeah I so suppose it easily breaks up if you basically the, the biggest danger is non-trained phd students <laughs> in handling the fibers and we put actually a lot of effort into reducing <laughs> wait, wait until you have a that PI, uh, professor handling yeah but they normally then, don't handle that then, then, then everything <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no so um Actually, I mean, the, this tip is never in contact, it's especially if you do quantum optic experiments where, where you have different procedures. But this tip is never in contact. So you have two issues. First is dirt on the tip, which seem, would be a really big issue, but actually this is not. If you, if you mount the tip in a good way and you can easily clean it, just wipe it with, a, with, a, with ethanol. Um, it really, you have to do something really bad if you want to break it. And the, 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 I would say the biggest permanent damage is that is, is, is scratching. If you have basically put it on the surface, for whatever reason, you put it on your nano sample or you write and drive into the sample and then scan. So basically scratch over the surface. This can really ruin your mirror. Okay. But the break is not a big issue. Okay, that's, that's cool. Um, yes. <laughs> let's, uh, let's break for lunch. Um, thank you again, Jonathan, for the nice presentation. Thank you. Um,